Hey guys, with my first video game review, we're going to be taking any video game, new, weird, old, or perhaps you never heard of it, nothing is safe and everything's fair game. Start with the game that every college kid knows, Don't Starve. Oh, I'm sorry, you have a roommate over there? That's cool, don't worry about it. Then Don't Starve together. Don't Starve is a survival horror roguelike indie game. I think I got them all there. That starts off with literally no guidance. Well, thanks. That's just about as vague as it gets. Hang on, maybe we should back up a bit. You don't really learn this in the game very much, but the intro videos reveal you as Wilson, a scientist who's fresh out of ideas and willing to resort to terrible ones. Maybe Sir an alchemist I hate. Anyway, a strange voice offers you forbidden knowledge, which last I checked is always a good idea. You accept this, make some poor decisions, and before you know it, you are sucked into another dimension, with your only help being a guy who's literally twice as tall as you. He doesn't seem like a trustworthy fellow. There. Now we're caught up. You can already tell this game is a sick sense of humor, other than how much Tim Burton would be proud, because it doesn't tell you how to do anything. At all. Seriously, I have no idea what I'm doing. What are these three things, anyway? Health. I think that's a stomach. And what's that brain doing there? Whatever. I need food. Why? At first, food is fairly simple to get. Just pick some berries or carrots. We're going to need something better than that. How about a bunny? Hang on, that's not a bunny. Can it be? The mythical jackalope! Just like in the motherland! Anyway, it's about to get dark. Probably should start a fire or something. Are those eyes? Must be in my imagination. And that's it! Eat food, light a torch when it gets dark, and we're good, right? Well, not quite. Don't starve in many ways, it's a very sandbox feel. With tons of materials and things everywhere that for a long time, you don't know what they are for without looking it up. What can I even do with Niter? And how do I plant these seeds? What's a ring thing? A potato? Is that a rocket? I fail to see why I need to pick up poop. After picking up anything you can find, it's time to throw it all together to hopefully make something. Like full scale clothes and tools. Man, I wish I could make a rabbit trap out of quite literally twigs and grass. But I guess I'm also not a scientist with forbidden knowledge. Or murdering that rabbit and cooking it with my bare hands. Dang. I'm kinda messed up. There's not just bunnies in this game, though. There are other packs of animals, like turkeys, birds, and... Beefalo? Something me finds that hilarious. However, it only gets worse. The enemies are many and varied, to say the least. From spiders to dogs to random tentacles to... Is that a pig, man? Huh. Thought I saw a lot of those in Minecraft. They are no joke, though. While there are ways to befriend many enemies, there's also ways to severely tick them off. And they will end you. Though as much as each one is a threat, each one is also vital, since they provide items you need for your recipes. And I only named off the simple enemies. There are much more. Like bees. No! My weapons are useless! What was that? I swear I'm seeing things. You can find the materials eventually you can make the science machine. I have no idea what that is or how it works. Ah. That's what it does. Neat. Anyway, it unlocks prototypes and new things to build and opens up a plethora of options. Literally to the point of me spending multiple days just looking at my options and figuring out what I can make. I still don't know half what I'm capable of, or what these things do. And there's even more machines and more different recipes you can get for tons of possibilities. You seriously have to have all your marbles to figure this mess out. Okay, everyone stop, I know I'm not seeing things. What is that? While this isn't obvious at first, being in an alternate freaky Tim Burton style adventure takes its toll on one's mind. That, and you haven't been sleeping, the weather is hectic, and there are freaky monsters everywhere. And I also may have eaten raw meat a few times in desperation. After a while, you start going a little, how to say, loopy. And our poor character yeah. starts seeing things. At first, this makes everything more and more distorted, which when I was first playing this game scared me to no end. Also, you'll notice more and more of them in the dark. Like that. And that. Dude, there's a witch! Go away! What is that hand doing? Hand! Hand! Get out of here! No! <laughs> Did it just steal my light? What makes it worse is that during the day you also start seeing monsters. Don't worry, they can't harm you. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm so dead. The more and more crazy you get, the more the shadows are visible, and the more, how to say, lively they get. 
That's right, eventually they will attack you. They're very strong, but they give you nightmare fuel, which is essential for many hard recipes. But they aren't the only fan changes. Lots of details get worse and worse. Even the point of bunnies changing to beardlings? Freaky. This is definitely one of my favorite concepts of the game since it, for the most part, doesn't do anything but actually scare you or creep you out, just like living in that kind of place would be. But then once you hit that tipping point, things go very bad very quickly for the unprepared. For the prepared, actually, too, Flemmer. For everyone, really. I mean, those guys are hard. Now you may have noticed there are more people than just Wilson. However, how in the world they got here or their backstories, I don't know. We have the overly manly man, a werebeef with a girl from Rayman, a guy with a spider? A mime, a cyberman, a possessed lady, that naked librarian we all knew as a kid, and Maxwell the villain himself. But my personal favorite is by far Willow. She's a pyro, so we have a lot in common, and we'll light things on fire when you aren't looking. They can add more zest to the game, and something me laughs hysterically watching the entire forest burn on accident. <laughs> Man, Smokey's going to kill me! Another thing I love about Don't Starve is how the dialogue is done in this game, and all the different things they say. I also really enjoy how everyone's voice is a different instrument, because I think it really fits the mood. <laughs> to make it worse, do you know there's a campaign? Incredible, I know, this unforgiving, harsh nightmare you're living through has a way to actually win. All you have to do is find the door while playing normally, which is made much easier with the help of hard to craft items, after a series of challenges against Maxwell himself, each of which are incredibly hard and randomly generated. And finally at the end you confront Maxwell, and for spoilers sake, I won't say what happens. Well mostly because I suck at this game too much to actually make any progress there. Like, I had to look up or cheat to get most of that stuff. What, you think you think to do a review I have to have skill? I don't got any skill in this game. I stink. And what I've shown you isn't even the full extent, there also is the Reign of Giants DLC, which adds tons of things like items, seasons, and, well, giants. I cheated in some of them, but they are nothing to be trifled with. They are extremely hard to kill. And even without the DLC, there are many things in place to explore, lots of monsters I never even knew about without watching the trailers or cheating, and much, much more. There are so many things to explore in this game, it is incredible. So in the end, what do I think of Don't Starve? Overall, this game is very unforgiving and very harsh. Not once does it try to hold your hand or even nudge you in the right direction. Every day is a struggle, but every victory is well earned, even if it all can be taken away in an instant. I definitely recommend this game as it's very well made and challenging. Hey guys, thanks for watching my first video game review. If you enjoyed this, I definitely plan on doing more, and if you have an idea or suggestion, please comment below or on one of my other YouTube videos. If you want to see me completely play a video game, then check out the two I'm currently going through. Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask on the 3DS, and Pokemon Omega Ruby. Or you can check out my channel to see other games that I've done. But until then, I'll see you later. Just please, don't turn off the... Ah. This can't be good. Yes. But the wuss stays alive the longest. No matter how hard his soul dies.